Hey everybody, I wanted to take a look at peer grade again and take a look at an assignment and how we create an assignment. Um, so I figured I'd just walk you through my thinking as I create one of them. So uh, I already started to play with this. I'm logged into my class. This is connected to Google Classroom, um, but this is just looking at a typical assignment. So if I go in, I can see the different sections, but this is one of my classes because it's connected to Google Classroom. All of the students that I have, they are automatically brought over as participants. I'm not going to click on that right now just so I can protect their identity. I can go in and look at class settings to see what is this thing called and, you know, what emails and everything else, what will students receive. I can also go in and take a look at the summary and see what students are creating what work. Um, but I wanted to just take a look at an assignment and see what does this thing really look like. Um, so I went into create assignment. Um, I'm going to show you this because I've already added a lot of details. So one of the things that I learned, and this is very important, is it's best to start off with peer grade. In my opinion, it's best to start off with peer grade in class face to face with students. And I I learned through previous semesters that if you start it off and you just give them, you know, hey, go online this weekend and do this, they don't understand. So I think it's best to have something quick and easy and simple to go through as students get up and running. So what I do is I bring them into class and this is a hybrid class. So I'll have them face to face and then have some online components and I'll have a simple assignment. So I create an assignment. What is digital literacy? I would normally watch this video from Nicole Pinkert in class and then talk about it. But I figured, you know what, I will uh, watch the video in class, have a, a quick write so they can write for five, ten minutes max, have a quick write after they watch the video. And then normally in class, there would be some discussion. What I'm going to try and do, what I do is I use peer grade to facilitate this discussion and get them in the habit of using it. So I basically start off the title of this is what is digital literacy? What does it mean to be digitally literate? I embed this video from YouTube here. Uh, you can basically click on the button and save the video. It will embed quite nicely. You can add images and functions and everything else, hyperlinks. And then down beneath, I say, okay, start up a Google Doc. In this doc, please define digital lit. What does it mean? What are the skills, strategies, dispositions? Uh, what will your students need to survive now and survive and succeed now and in their futures? Um, are you digitally literate? And then basically, I want them to have this response be three to five hundred words in length. Um, also include some multimodal com content, uh, hyperlinks, other stuff that they've read, it, you know, online during the class. Um, so this is a couple weeks into the semester, so we've already read and talked a little bit about this. Um, for some students, the three to 500 words will be a challenge. For others, the three to 500 words will also be a challenge. Some students, uh, they find it difficult to stay within that, uh, those guidelines or that window, and some have a hard time sort of writing to get up to that. So I have it be an achievable goal, and it should take about five, 10 minutes to just write and respond, and nothing will be absolutely perfect, but it's not supposed to be. I ask them to share their Google Doc when they're ready, and then they can upload a file um, or share it there. This is where I would upload a file if I had something else I wanted them to see. So then I go to Next. Um, here and Next is where it has the rubric, so it already populates with, uh, I can have sections of the rubric. Uh, for this, I'm, I want to have the rubric be very simple. So mention something your classmate did well, mention something your classmate could improve upon. I can add questions, I can add explanations, create new sections, uh, edit and duplicate. Uh, so a lot of the stuff that you would see in Google Forms. What's also nice is I can go into their rubric library. So I can go through and see other rubrics that people have made in the past. So if I want to say, okay, I'm looking for a synthesis post, I can see different versions of uh, synthesis post that people would have um, if they've used it before. I'm not sure. So I have my own personal uh, post saved here as well. So I can add this and I can copy the rubric questions. 
So basically it copied over my rubric questions from my previous work. So it's really nice that you can create a rubric that you like. Um, so here it says first question meant that mentioned something your classmate did well is the post at least three to 500 words does include hyperlinks um, and annotations using hypothesis. I've talked about that in other videos. Um, does it include multiple multimodal text and content? And what's something they can improve upon? Um, so it's a very simple rubric. Get a little bit of feedback. Um, give and get a little bit of feedback in the classroom. In the past, um, a lot of my students don't like this rubric. And I'm still unpacking why they don't like it. I figured it would be a nice, easy, lightweight way to give and get feedback. I think some of the students that do give and get feedback want more. Um, so this has been interesting, but I'll keep unpacking that to think about um, how I use this as a formative assessment in my classes. So once I hit next, then what I can do is I can have a couple different uh, templates for this. Um, normally what I would do is I would set this as homework. And I talked about this in the past. I can set this as homework and say, okay, now the hardest part about this setting up as homework is you have to think in terms of like these windows where this will open this day and time, close at this day and time, and then the, the review period begins and ends at a certain time. So you can't have the review period start before the submission period ends. So that's always a challenge. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up as... How do I change this? So I'm going to change this to a live session. So what I'm going to do is as soon as I create it, I can go live in my class. Um, I'll use that for the face to face time. But then in regular or normal homework situations, I would have that submission and review period set up. Um, and then once you're done, you basically create assignment and this thing goes live and it goes into Google Classroom and students can work on it. I'm not going to share it right now because I don't want my kids getting weirded out as to why this is there. Um, but that's an overview of how I get started with uh, peer grade in my classes. Hopefully that was beneficial to you. Uh, leave me some comments below and please subscribe if you haven't already.